This is Whangarei, gateway to New Zealand's north. Its magnificent harbour guarded by Mount Manai on one side and Marsden Point on the other. It's a welcome refuge from the Pacific Ocean for both local and international boaties. And every year, the magnificent roads of this region become home to drivers from New Zealand and the Asia-Pacific region for the INEOS International Rally of Whangarei. I've never driven roads with so good big cameras and stuff. It can work to your advantage or it could just spit you out, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> 18 stages over three days. Nine of the roads will be repeated taking in both the north and the south of Whangarei. This is New Zealand's only FIA sanctioned international rally and for the first time our AP4 cars will compete alongside the FIA R5 cars, opening the door for New Zealand's best to win this rally outright. We won this rally in 2007 and we'd love to do it again this year. Hayden Patton will lead the field of cars, the Hyundai Star using this event as a warm-up to his next WRC event. Ben Hunt showed in round one that his production-based Subaru has plenty of potential against the AP4s. I proved at Otago that the Subaru has the speed and we're going to conquer these roads this weekend. And 2017 Aussie Rally champion Nathan Quinn has crossed the Tasman to take on the Kiwis. I'll just attack it like any other and if I, can get, if I give away five seconds it's better to Better than giving away a $5,000 bumper bar, that's for sure. <laughs>It's um, an interesting stage, it's got a lot of grass on the outside and a lot of barriers and a lot of tyres and um, a lot of mud and I guess you just got to get around there as um, efficient as you can and you know it's, it's only a kilometre so you don't have to break any records but you know put on a show for the crowd I guess. Hayden Patton fastest through the stage but no records this time. The cars will be parked overnight before an early 6.30am start on Saturday morning as we head to the best rally roads in the world. What makes them really special is the nature of the camber. Um, so even though there's a lot of corners, with the camber, so big angles on the corners, you can, you can go really fast. So uh, for drivers, that's a great feeling when you're leaping from one corner to the next. If you overdrive too much, you can pull off the side of that camber and then you're a bit of a passenger. I remember actually Sebastian Loeb uh, many years ago, showing my age a little bit, um, but he said, you know, some of the best roads in the world um, up north. Our roads are the best in the world. I know we say it all the time, it's such a cliche, but having rallied around the world, there's, there's nothing like it. They're just so smooth, they're like racetracks and on gravel roads and, you know, it's fantastic. We're really lucky. Four stages repeated twice for Saturday and the first stage is a real beauty. The day starts north of Whangarei, stage three, Ripa Nui, just under 30 kilometres with some very fast, long straights. Early morning fog added to the challenge of the first stage of the day. Hayden Patton with new co-driver Mel Peden stepping in for John Kennard, who's recovering from a hip operation. Also joining us again, great to have Glenn Inkster back. Well, WRC driver, 
complex notes. Really hard job to get into it anyway, but add fog and losing the visual references, it's certainly going to add to the pressure. But Malcolm Peden's very, very good at co-driving, and it's going to be uh, interesting to see how he gets up to speed with Hayden. 200. Patton crosses the finish line, 16 minutes, 42.4. No record on those conditions, but if the pressure is on for Mel Peden, how about Nathan Quinn, the Aussie Rally Champion? He's driving an R5 Fiesta in fog, never experienced these roads. I think there's a few challenges, you know. I'd like to be optimistic. Uh, realistically, though, there's going to be a lot of learning in the car and, and probably a lot more learning on the ro with the road than I was expecting. So um, it, it's all going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, getting through the first stage uh, will be a bit of a relief, I reckon. And the view from the APRC TV drone shows just how magnificent these roads really are. If only the drivers could see where they were going. Ben Hunt showed in round one that he has the determination to take on Patton, but does he have the determination to take on these conditions, Inky? Well, he can see through the windscreen, so that's a good start. Ben showed at Otago he's really found something for this year. And uh, I expect the confidence from Otago to flow through and actually go pretty good in this fog. And that's special pace note language coming out there. Matt Summerfield looking at this runner to get his stages back on track. Biggest challenge for Fung Rei is, uh, is keeping, keeping going really. Um, past years attrition always creeps in. Uh, the roads aren't rough but they just lead to um, like mechanicals, like the cars are under a lot of load, the drivers are um, having to work really hard, so keeping going is, is definitely a, a tough thing to do up here. 17 minutes, 31.8, second fastest so far, but still 50 seconds down on pattern. A huge expectation too on Emma Gilmore, until a final stage puncture on Otago, she had been in a podium position, looking to do the same here again. And Emma's done a lot of work on her pace notes in the off-season, and these are certainly the conditions where you want to believe your pace notes. Of course, in, in every foggy stage, there's always the bit of road that's not foggy. We're seeing that right here. You like to think you're out of the worst of it, and then more fog comes along. Emma second overall behind Patton. Dylan Turner teaming up with Sarah Breton this weekend, as regular co-driver Malcolm Reed was sitting with APRC challenger Mike Young. Holy smoke, it's bloody foggy. Yep. And, uh, you know, that's pretty nerve-wracking going into fog because uh, with a new co-driver, you know, and myself, we just it just really didn't give us a good chance to to, uh, to bond, to gel together. So, um, yeah, I was pretty uh, disappointed, obviously, with fog, but it's the same for everyone. Um, and, yeah, it's just one of those things, you just got to cop it on the chin. Do you push uh, or do you take it a little bit easy and maybe think it's quite a long rally, you get a chance to come back? Turner, sixth fastest on the stage, now seventh overall. And the co-driver changes kept on coming, with Rhys Gardner teaming up with Phil Hall from the UK. Gardner looking to go further than a disappointing day one on Otago, where his gearbox broke. Aussie-based Irishman Richie Dalton was back in the Fiesta. And he had top Australian co-driver Dale Moscat alongside. Moscat bringing international experience, including stints with the WRC2 and Chinese Championship. Fast, five right clip. Fast, yep, fast, five right clip. 220, fast, five right clip. 100. Camber, five right, opens to flat. But Rana Horan falling off the road in his Evo 9, so out of contention for day one. Series sponsor Brian Green has plenty of experience both here at Whangarei and across the Asia Pacific region. The former New Zealand and Malaysian champion has been teamed up with Fleur Patterson for 15 years. But on this stage, a warning on the rally safe has them slowing down. And we see the rally safe unit on the left, obviously, the, a co driver there warning people as well. The rally safe system communicates back. It stopped the stage. It looks like it's Richie Dalton there crashed, and of course the car behind him, Josh Marston, stopped to render assistance as well. And the message is quickly relayed to the stage start, where the stage is stopped to allow a paramedic to go to the aid of the crew. And with Rally Safe showing a 13G impact, Dalton and co-driver Dale Moskett are taken to hospital as precaution, but fortunately both released. Coming up for more challenging conditions in the morning and outstanding two-wheel drive performance.
stage four, Hora Hora. Just 13.6 kilometres, a short loop with plenty of corners. There's more fog too for Hayden Pannon, but he's already looking forward to a repeat run of the stage in the afternoon. Look at some changes at the at the midday service, especially with the rally looking like it's going to be dry this year, you'll find it will sweep off a lot. It's going to be very, very hard on tyres and second pass is going to be like tarmac on those clean lines, so you do tend to maybe stiffen up the car a little bit for your little suspension changes, but at the end of the day, if the car's working, you don't want to reinvent the wheel as well, so you try and stay within a window. down half five right. Finished. Holy shit. And that's a more special driver, co-driver talk. Meanwhile, Matt Summerfield starting to come to grips with his new car. Oh, that's a big hit, seemingly online too, but I'd be surprised if nothing's not broken. Yeah, I got through the first one, but um, probably a car into the second one, hit a massive something on the road and um, yeah, something wrong with the strut, so I don't know how much longer we can carry on. Emma Gilmore still holding second after this foggy stage, but now coming under pressure from Ben Hunt. Into four right, 60. Don't worry about the mud. Yeah. That's Emma right, telling him not to turn the wiper on, not to smear the screen. And Hunt has been battling with issues with a temperamental heated screen, and these conditions could lead to big issues as well. A heated screen's great when it's working properly, it means you can take the heater out of the car, save weight and make it less complex, but uh, it also adds a massive electrical load to the car and so I guess they're just getting their heads around how to make it work properly and, and, and make sure the whole screen clears. Hunt second fastest, now third overall. Meanwhile Dylan Turner third fastest on the stage, but with half the field delayed in stage three, the stage was aborted and the rally would tour north to Pai here for a refuel and a regroup to get the rally back on time. Stage five, Tapahu, 17 kilometres long and features a very popular spectator spot. So a perfect place for Hayden Patton to spread some gravel and dust on the media contingent, much to the delight of the crowd. But the fog is cleared and conditions are perfect. And this is a power stage, so bonus points up for grabs. And the stage record is 12 minutes, 5.3 seconds by Ken Block in his WRC Fiesta, which has a lot more power and torque. It'd be pretty impressive if Hayden could beat that in an AP4 car. 12.05.8 just misses by half a second. Yeah. Quinn next through the stage, but the Aussie champion not coming to grips with the stage at all. And the car should suit this stage very well, but it's a really tricky stage for the first time on some pace notes. There's so many rhythm changes. We've got narrow twisty through the forest there, and then the stage comes out, opens up on some real quite wide and fast roads. But just trying to maximise it the whole way can be a very big challenge. So let's see his time then. 12 minutes, 47.7. I don't think that will be enough to keep the bonus points. Ben Hunt next through. Former champ, look sharp. Nice clear Hug vision right, now. 30. Hug along for right opens. Keep in for left 30. Oh, that's a big Keep drift wide. But right this plus, stage really 50. will suit Ben Hunt. He goes very well in the twisty stuff. Mm -hmm. It's looking like a good time. Right, 100. Even in the fog, 12 minutes 27. So he moves to that second on the power stage. Losing points at Rally Otago, Emma Gilmore needs as many bonus points as possible so she can stay in touch with Hunt. She's leading Hunt going into the stage by just 8.4 seconds. Yeah, Emma's really started the season with a lot of speed. It's great to see through this narrow section of the road. Clock is counting down. Fast, five right, 60 to stop, fast five right. 12 minutes, 37.3, third fastest. That puts her to third by just 1.9 seconds. Dylan Turner now, 12 minutes, 45 here. Not enough to claim any bonus points. But with Summerfield limping through the stage, Turner takes over fifth position. Reese Gardner, 12 minutes, 39, a top five time for one bonus point, moving him from 15th to 10th. 
and the old master of the rally sprint, Graham Featherston, sneaking into fourth on the stage for two points and now sixth overall. Josh Marsden holding seventh in the Holden Marina. One more stage before service at Whangarei and that's the scenic Helena stage with a steep climb in the middle and a tricky narrow bridge at the end. With four stages completed on the morning run, Patton was starting to consider the best tyre choice for the repeat of the stages in the afternoon. Yeah, it's different from tyre to tyre, so they've all got different width and numbers and it's relevant to the, the brand if you like. Uh, but a wider tyre, if it's sweep, especially in the second pass, is giving you more contact packs on the ground, more rubber you put on the ground, the more grip. So, uh, yeah, the more tyre you got on the ground, the better. If it's loose or slippery, then you want a narrower tyre to cut through that. So that's um, why on the first pass you'd have a narrower tyre if you could. Have a breather. Now that was cool. This is the tricky bridge at the end. No problem for Patton on his way to another stage win, but no records yet. What about the Aussie chap, Nathan Quinn? Well, first of all, just take a look at that road. That is just absolutely fantastic. He's certainly got the right gadget for this road. There's lots of corners in there. Maybe they haven't got the tyre pressures quite right. He looks like he's really struggling for some grip. Oh, he's just turned it around in a very narrow section too. That's going to take some time to get back going again. So no room for error. Just ask Ben Hunt. Helena Bay was the stage that we crashed on, but it's still probably one of my favourite stages up here. And it's a, probably a true driver stage. It's blooming technical and, and narrow. And, you know, we had a lot of stuff going on with the car um, when we had those few crashes. Um, you know, a lot of it is my fault, but when you're trying to push with something like that, um, and you probably shouldn't be, I probably need to kick around the around the butt, but um, yeah, it's, we've worked on that and we've you know, hopefully sorted all those um, issues out, so you know, I'm feeling pretty happy driving the car. And Hunt second, but well short of his 2015 stage record. Emma Gilmore had swapped her tyres front to back before the stage, but many of the drivers had taken two spares in order to give them fresh tyres. Emma finding little grip on the road. Well, this is about tyre management. There's a lot of stages. Emma's gone with, with the four tyres and just the one spare. It does save weight. But she only lost nine seconds to Hunt and kept third place. Meanwhile, Dylan Turner just two seconds slower than Hunt on the stage. He would move past Featherston to fourth overall. So after a dramatic morning, Hayden Patton on top, nearly two minutes ahead of Hunt, with Gilmore another 11 seconds back. And a welcome rest for Mel Peden after a high pressure morning in the Hyundai. Last stage I really enjoyed. Uh, Hayden said it was a little bit sideways, so it might have felt cool, but it wasn't as fast as it could be. Uh, still battling a little bit, was reading the notes fast enough. There's just so much detail to get out for each corner, but really enjoying it, and I'm just trying to lift my game every stage and make it better and better. But I mean, I couldn't have a more accommodating driver. Um, he's so helpful and just nothing's a problem. Yeah, Mel's doing a good job. Uh, he's definitely thrown the deep end first stage, couldn't see more than 50 metres in the fog, and he's done a, a really good job, so uh, full credit to him, and for sure we'll just continue building and gelling as, as the rally goes on. It was a tricky start this morning with the with the fog, as everyone experienced, but uh, you know the car's running well, the, the improvements we've done in our pace note are really good, and uh, I was probably a little bit cautious in Helena, it's always been a bit of a bogey stage for me, so I was uh, just trying to keep the car online, but yeah, really happy with the job we've done today. Any gap's a good gap in rallying, and you know we lost 20, 20 odd seconds in that first stage. I mean, everyone was in the same boat with the fog, but we just took the more cautious approach, and you know we've made that back in the last three stages. So we'll just um, keep pushing on in these next four. Just two cars have found the way for the New Zealand Historic Challenge, but the Motor Guard Trophy is contested at this event, so plenty of motivation for Regan Ross. Oh, feeling clinky. <laughs> it's always good banter. His name's already on that motor guard trophy, so uh, no, it'd be good to, good to get that, you know. So yeah. Ross was joined by John Silcock in the Group B RX7, but he couldn't match the pace of the escort driver on these roads. By the end of the morning, Ross had a 45-second lead and was 14th overall. In the NZ2 class, Dylan Thompson continued to show he is the man to beat. Robbie Stokes had crashed out on stage one, so Thompson's opposition came from Dave Taylor, second in the Honda Civic. Oh. 
and Amy Keeley, third in class in her Suzuki Swift. Tony Gosling had his modified open two-wheel drive escort at Whangarei, giving some welcome opposition to Wayne Pittams. Both escorts featuring sequential gearboxes and modern motors. In Pittams' car, the engine is an English Millington competition unit, as this car was originally built in Ireland. Um, we used to come up here um, many years ago and uh, these roads are still available, so quite technical, which is the sort of stuff I was brought up on. The, the main cars back then was probably the, uh, maybe the Sabaros, but the 3 3 Mazdas, and they were known to be quite fragile, so uh, the Lancia was a great car, never really showed its potential, it was pretty much bulletproof, mechanically. Um, so while it was perceived to be a very expensive car to bring out and to run, it wasn't really the case because it was, the maintenance was very low. You know, we've always built our own cars in the past and, um, and it allows you to use a bit of own, your own ingenuity and put your own flavour to the car. Um, while a lot of it on this particular car was already there, um, it allows us to develop things. We've, we've changed the geometry, we've done a lot, of it, a lot of work on the front end of the car so it's not general escort stuff anymore. There's a lot of special stuff in the front end and it's quite exciting to be able to do that and see what you can achieve with them. I brought in this car, uh, quite a big investment and uh, it's pretty cool. I think it's a pretty cool machine so I just wanted to have uh, one last or one or two more flings uh, at the national championship. Um, so it's just to take off the bucket list, it's just to sign off I guess really. Stage 7 Ripa Nui, a repeat of the morning stage but this time without the fog. Yeah, clear skies and clear roads. These Northland roads do sweep off well. It creates a really grippy surface, but you do have to manage those tyres. And I've got to say, Inky, isn't it great to see all the spectators lining up to support the Kiwis? Yeah, it's a great little spectator spot, this one. You could say it's electric. Now, Pad will be looking at that stage record. 16 minutes, 36 to beat. And down the line, yes, 16 minutes, 10.6. Almost a yeah. second a K faster, mega time. Now in 2016, Ben Hunt got caught in a rally right. traffic jam in this intersection 16. as he caught a slow APRC driver. But no problems today, and the dust is not an issue. And he's really driving well. He's establishing himself as the guy that really will be there if Hayden falters. Centre of small crest, 60. And his keeping time through here was a left. minute faster Ten than the morning. Five left minus. Emma Gilmore just falling back from Hunt here, although still comfortably in third overall. Hey, pin left. Keep it up. 60. Nice line through that hairpin. Right, right left. 50, 6 right. She's a different driver this year, she's really on it. Dylan Turner well off the pace of Gilmore in fourth, but he's now under pressure from the Aussie Nathan Quinn. Oh my god, I thought he was going to take out those poor people yeah. in the sheep pen. <laughs> and with Turner now just six seconds ahead, Nathan Quinn had the bit between his teeth. Wow, he's, he's really throwing that car around, but the second passes, it's nice to get some confidence. It'll have been a consistent morning for Josh Marsden, keeping constant pressure on the top five. That was rewarded with a move up to sixth overall on the stage, just 10 seconds behind Quinn. Featherston dropping to 7th as the newer AP4 and R5 cars were able to better handle the road conditions. A rush repair job in service saw Matt Summerfield back on the stages, but with a 3 minute 20 time penalty, the car setup wasn't great. And with some borrowed suspension, the learning curve starts again really. 17 minutes 08.6, good stage time, but he was now 
32nd overall. Coming up, we review the Gold Rally Challenge and can anyone match Patton's pace? The disruption on stage three and four meant that the contenders for the Gold Rally Challenge didn't really start until stage five. Jeff Argyle making a welcome return to the series in his Evo 8 was the first of the series of the stages, so he did post a time on stage four, while many others received assess times. Otago winner Grant Blackberry led at the first service. Matt Jensen just 12.8 seconds behind. Warwick Redfern outstanding, 19 seconds back, but he had Argyle just 0.7 behind. Eugene Crenet had been fourth, but Argyle got past him before the service. And after touring through the first two stages, Brindley Smith was set to go to the start of stage five until this happened. And that's the end of the rally. The dip. Yeah. Marcus Van Cleek not having the runaway success he showed at Otago. He was battling Brent Taylor in the Toyota FT86. These two swapping positions through the morning and Taylor just 1.5 behind in service. Former champ Bruce Herbert lost time on stage six, dropping from eighth to 14th. That promoted the escort driver Anthony Jones, who was now within eight seconds of Taylor. The afternoon stages saw Blackberry consolidate his lead over Jensen. Jensen coming under pressure from Argyle, who would take second place by 6.4 seconds on the final stage. John Giltrap from Canterbury, and Leon Stiles from Tauranga scrapping over the final two placings, with Stiles winning that battle on stage 10. And the two-wheel drive class Van Klink held on to the lead. But Jones moved into second on the final stage when Taylor dropped 42 seconds. Final results then, Blackberry first, Argyle second and Jensen third. The comeback by Argyle earning him the goal fuel bonus but it's Blackberry who now leads from Van Klink and Grunay. We knew Argyle would be pretty quick and Matt Jensen, we knew those guys would be our competition for the day and um, yeah, it was neat, it was a good, a good little fight. Two final stages for Saturday. Dry, dusty conditions, swept roads, warm temperatures. Tire management once again will come into play here. Most of these cars are set up so that they can take two spares. In a group of stages, a driver and co-driver can choose when to use the two spares and effectively use six tyres throughout the group of stages. On these abrasive roads, this can be an advantage, but there's a 25 kilogram weight penalty for taking that extra spare. Patterned in record-breaking form now, smashing Ken Block's record to post 11 minutes 44.8 on stage 9, then taking 10 seconds off Ben Hunt's record in Alina to lead the rally by 4 minutes. And once again Ben Hunt would head the best of the rest. Just like Otago, he had started with an issue but fought back to take second place. He's out at entry, hug long four left, Titans, 80. So how's it going buddy? Yeah. Keep in six left, keep in long four right. Emma Gilmore dropped back slightly over the day but still held third overall. Staying ahead of the hard-charging Nathan Quinn and Dylan Turner. A clever tactic of tyre management, giving her a slight edge over the two behind and rewarded her with third place and day one bonus points. For Quinn, it had been a day of learning. New car, new road conditions, but it wasn't the pace he'd hoped for. But no one was going to match Patton on this day. Fourth overall, just 5.2 seconds down on Gilmore. Dylan Turner had been slowly closing in on Quinn all afternoon. In the end, the gap was down to 7.9 seconds. A good effort with the new co-driver.
Graham Featherston wrapping up day one and sixth. A late push through stage 10 and fifth fastest time had pushed him ahead of Josh Marsden to sixth overall. Marsden finishing seventh overall. Dave Strong and Brian Green are two of New Zealand's most experienced rally drivers. While they weren't battling at the top end, the two veterans were having a great battle with just 9.7 seconds separating them over 10 stages. In the end, it was Strong and his V6 powered S2000 special who won bragging rights over Green. And Greeny's really enjoying this new car, getting used to the smaller 1600cc engine, but you know, they're going very well. Reese Gardner having a disappointing end of the day, dropping out of the top 10 on stage 9. But Jack Williamson finished the day getting more miles under his rally belt as he makes the transition from the Suzuki Swift to a R4 Subaru. Open a junction, small crest, long six left. So confirming pattern dominant on day one by four minutes over Hunt and Gilmore, but just 13 seconds separate third to fifth. And a successful day on the north for Regan Ross, outstanding 12th overall and the fastest two-wheel drive on the stages. John Silcock finishing his day strongly to keep the pressure on Ross for the Motor Guard Trophy. Dylan Thompson led the NZ2 cars and was under a minute behind Ross. Tony Gosling next and he had kept clear of Wayne Pittams throughout the day. Pittams had no real competition at Otago, so now he was really enjoying the battle with Tony Gosling. Dave Taylor fourth in NZ2. While Amy Keeling had an adventurous time in her Suzuki Swift. In fact, this earns her the hell a moment of the rally. Sunday morning and there is rain in the air as the drivers leave overnight Park Ferme. The stages today are fast and unforgiving, but as this event drivers were permitted to drive the stages twice in reconnaissance, something which pays huge dividends on race day. You know, the skill level of a driver is, is one thing, but actually the skill of driving fast, that, that's where the art of pace notes, that's what makes rallying so special because it, it's such a teamwork, you have total faith in your co-driver and you're making a set of instructions to drive a blind piece of road as fast as possible. You have a lot more refined pace notes, so you have a lot more trust and belief in them and I think that generally means the speed of the rally goes up. Um, obviously on the first pass you write your notes, the second pass you're checking, but also adding a lot more smaller details that you wouldn't if you're only doing one pass, so it just gives you yeah, as a driver a lot more confidence that the pace note is 100% right. It is the speed and some of the deceptive corners so that's where you know your recce is so important to make sure that you're, you've got some really fast places and then you're coming to some really slow and technical places so it's making sure your notes are really good that you're confident with your car not fighting your car because if you're fighting your car it's an absolute nightmare up there. Stage 11 Waipu Caves this year running in reverse direction a real roller coaster stage Big drops off the road, sprinkling of rain in the air as well as Pattern blasts through in 12 minutes 48 seconds. But the road is still dry and dusty. I left over small crest. And I can assure you the pitches don't do this road justice. The, uh, the crests are massive. It is like you're in a roller coaster. Admittedly a very fast one when you're on board with Hayden. On day one, Ben Hunt was the best of the rest behind Pattern, so he will run two minutes behind the WRC star on the stages today. Hunt, 43 seconds behind Pattern on this stage. Well, on roads that require huge commitment, they haven't actually run this way in quite a long time. And of course, he's in a great position in the overall rally, and he doesn't want to blow it by going off the road. Emma Gilmore had, had a huge crash on this road early in her career when she was driving a Sabari. But that's ancient history now as she gets the morning started with the third fastest so far, just 5.5 seconds down on Hunt. And there's a lot of road to be used there and she's using all of it. 
really fast section of road here. But the Kiwis caught napping a little by the Aussie champ, Quinn, taking to these roads like a koala and a gum tree. 13 minutes, 22.6, putting him to second on leg two, ahead of Hunt and Gilmore. Dylan was trying hard, perhaps sometimes too hard. More co-driver lingo. But he still managed fifth place despite tearing off the front guard. And all the competitors can run the hella daytime running lights like Josh Marsden continuing his day one battle with Graham Featherston for top ten positions. Featherston two seconds faster than the Holden driver. Despite finishing day one in 30th place, Matt Summerfield was starting ninth on the road and that meant he was benefiting from nicely swept stages. But unfortunately it also meant he got the heavy rain shower as well. Half the stage dry, the other half wet. So for him, seventh overall. After being stuck off the road on Saturday, Rana Horton making up for time with six fastest time here in his Evo 9. Stage 12 Millbrook, another Rally New Zealand favourite, but the rain is now blanketing the area, so suddenly running first on the road is an advantage for Patton. Not that he needed it. Yeah, the rain kind of binds the gravel together, so it's not such a disadvantage trying to clear the gravel. And of course the road doesn't cut up. Now these are typical WRC roads, and this R5 was built to compete in the WRC and Quinn seems to prefer these roads to the more technical Saturday stages and his second fastest again. But Hunt is just losing a little bit of time to Quinn as the stages got wetter, still third overall. Long four, right plus, Thursday. Keep in long five left minus, 50. Five right minus tights to keep in four. Emma Gilmore gaining three seconds on Hunt on the short stage, but still fourth, but now just 1.6 seconds behind the Subaru driver. Dylan Turner, as always, driving his own lines in fifth place. Yeah, generally it's a lot better to keep in the wheel tracks, but I think there he got out of line in one corner, that affects you in the next one. As you can see there, the previous cars have started to pull the clay bank onto the road, so you know, that can affect the, the following cars as well. Rana Horan well off line here. And there. He's used to off-roading. <laughs> and hanging on to it in sixth place. Two stages to complete the morning loop. Waiotera and Tangihura. And the rain now persistent across the whole area. But that hadn't put off the spectators who had come to see our WRC star in action on the roads they use every day. Now that rain had put pay to any record on stage 13, but Patton flew through stage 14 to beat his 2016 record time by 0.4 seconds. Turn the hook slow, half to right. Plenty of drama for those following Patton though. Quinn virtually tied with Gilmer on stage 13, but a split of just 0.4, then seeing his advantage slip again on stage 14 when he was just fifth fastest, and the gap to third now just 3.2. But Hunt had his own dramas. Fifth fastest on stage 13 saw him lose third to Emma Gilmore by 0.6 seconds. Keep in five right, 150. Seems a flat over small crest, 200. Then on 14, he clawed the pace back to put 10 seconds on the Dunedin driver. In fact, losing that 10 seconds to Hunt on stage 14 had actually put Gilmore under pressure as she was caught by a hard-charging Matt Summerfield. 
Summerfield's team had worked hard at the final service on day one to put a complete new suspension in the car, and the results were starting to show. He was second fastest on stage 13, third on 14th, and now fifth on the day two standings, just 0.4 behind Gilmore. Um, all feeling pretty good out there, obviously a bit of rain just to change it up a little bit. Uh, probably making the grip a little bit lower, but then it's also reducing the, the road sweeping as well. So uh, we're going uh, plenty of sideways, probably not the fastest way, but we're having a lot of fun in the car. It's been good so far, but if I wasn't having a hard enough time with the roads, it started to rain, so that's uh, added an extra, an extra spanner in the works. We made some changes last night, so uh, four different springs in the, in the suspension, and um, yeah, it's made... Uh, big change to the car speed um, and obviously all four wheels are propped up off the ground so uh, yeah it's, uh, this morning's going really good. Still to come Regan Ross has his hands on the motor guard trophy and the Trans-Tasman rivalry goes down to the wire. With just four stages left, Hayden Patton looked to have secured another easy victory. But what the Kiwi had also achieved was to put extra pressure on those following. There is no doubt that the game is lifted on the Brian Green Property Group New Zealand Rally Championship. Long left, 100. Max 6 right plus, don't. 150. The battle for second saw no let up between the Aussie champ Quinn and 2015 New Zealand champ Hunt. In fact, they were never more than 10 seconds apart. On stage 16, the repeat of the Millbrook stage, the rivalry got as close as it could. Yes, 4 minutes 30.3, a tie in the stage, but Quinn still ahead in the standings. Emma Gilmore and Matt Summerfield also locked in the battle for 4th position. Gilmore with a 4.3 second advantage through Waipu Caves. But on Millbrook, the two drivers incredibly close. Gilmore's time, 4 minutes 33.2. What can Summerfield do? Four minutes, 33.4. Dylan Turner just 20 seconds back in sixth, battling to hold off Josh Marsden and Rana Horan. Marsden just 30 seconds down on Turner. And Horan just a further 5.1 seconds back in eighth. Regan Ross came to Whangarei with one aim, to win the Motor Guard Trophy. Well, he did that and put himself well in the lead of the historic cup and finished ninth outright in the day two standings. John Silcock didn't have the pace to match the escort on these roads, but he still collected valuable points and should be faster at his home round at Canterbury. Tony Gosling won the NZ2 class on day two, and he might be motivated to keep going in the season in a highly modified escort. Dylan Thompson outgunned an NZ2 on these roads, but he leads the points in his modestly powered Fiesta. Wayne Pittams would have enjoyed the extra competition with Gosling, as he leads the remaining cars at NZ2 home. So in the final overall results combined over the two days, Ross takes the two-wheel drive honours. Thompson had done enough on Saturday to take second over Gosling. Stage 17, penultimate stage with its famous railway bridge. For many years, Kiwi Rally fans have come here to watch the stars of the WRC tame this road. Now they came to see Hayden Patton and our Kiwi drivers on this challenging day. And flat six left, minus 10, max six right, line 30, 
slight four, five left. The weather certainly two, adding to the drama plus, here, Inky. Uh, plus. Yeah, Two after such a dry feet. wreck here in day one, it's, it's quite a surprise to see such wet Still roads. And it is quite a challenge as more cars pass. Turn two left before sign. And check out this aerial perspective too, showing the fantastic variety on the stage. Nathan Quinn, the Aussie, what an experience here for him. Can he keep it in front of Ben Hunt, who's hard charging behind him? And a really fabulous stage through here as well. Classic Kiwi cambered corners too, isn't it, for the Aussie driver? A little cosmetic damage on the Subaru, but that won't slow Ben Hunt down. Here on the penultimate stage, he closes the gap to Quinn by 4.2 seconds. And Ben and, and the team at Speed Hub doing a great job to build and run a car that can compete Short with a, right a world keep rally 30, car. Keep in five left plus 60. Hug for right plus opens 30. And the battle for the top five wasn't over. Matt Summerfield was trailing Emma Gilmore by 4.9 seconds heading into this stage. And Matt and Nicole put a lot of effort into their pace notes. They've done the stage a lot, so they'll have fantastic notes. And he really is driving tidy and fast. So the race for fourth place is on the line on this stage. Gilmore would have to drive inch perfect to stay in front. But Summerfield just pips her and she drops back to fifth. 12 finishes on day two of the top category of NZRC. Jack Williamson putting another rally under his belt as he embarks on a steep learning curve in the top class. Dave Strong losing the battle with Brian Green on day two, but in the overall rally, Strong pipped Green by just 7.1 seconds. Ninth for Gardner on day two, but the problem on day one would see him finish behind Green in the overall standings. Josh Marsden trying hard on the final stage, but losing a place to Horan in the day two standings. But with Horan not being classified on day one, it's Marsden who takes sixth overall in the rally. Dylan Turner sixth on day two and fifth in the overall standings. Despite a few excursions into the fences, he had held on for a strong result and certainly has lots of fans along the way. Emma Gilmore not able to get back that eight seconds on Summerfield, so it finished in fifth on day two and frustratingly fourth on the overall standings. A strong drive to fourth on day two for the Summerfields, but of course Matt penalised by the broken suspension on day one, he would finish 10th overall. Ben Hunt tried hard to close that gap for second on day two. But it was the Aussie who had the upper hand just pipping Hunt by 4.2 seconds. However, overall, Hunt would sit second on the podium by over a minute after his great result on day one. But there can only be one winner, and Hayden Patton made no mistakes. He may not have claimed all the stage records, but he did take all the stage Black wins. Press, and hats off to Mel Peden, who hook, stepped in at short notice right. to take over the challenge of being his co-driver. And that's his first NZRC win. Yeah, great job, Mel. Like, he put up with the pressure of the fog on day one, and what a great feeling coming to the end of the rally. 100 over finish, very long left, Titans five. Perfect, finished. Got it, everything with oak. What's that? Perfect notes. Not okay. perfect, but... Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's check out the day two standings. Patton, Quinn and Hunt from Summerfield, Gilmore and Turner. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, perfect weekend. Uh, makes up for two years ago here where we had a lot of difficulties. So 
that's a good way to actually press the reset button because two years ago is when things started going wrong for us. So, uh, no, great weekend, great um, effort by the team, and uh, of course, Mel in the car for the first time. Yeah, and a fantastic start to the year, and you know, the other couple of years in this car, we've uh, had a bit of a bad start in the in the two day points, but um, you know, you know, I love Canterbury and be really looking for a, um, a win there. The competition here is great, you know, like uh, we had Dylan this morning not far behind us and and uh, Emma was just in front of us and then you got Ben and let's just forget about Hayden. Um, but, you know, between that lot and I could see um, Matt Summerfield was doing some good times and many others, like the competition is awesome and to come over here first time on the roads and you got to push yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone to be able to keep up, it was great. And in the overall standings it was Hunt who headed Quinn for second, Regan Ross an outstanding seventh. So let's see what that does on the points. Patton just 18 ahead of Hunt, Summerfield and Gilmore share third on 43. So we head to Canterbury in June as Hayden Patton takes a break to rejoin the WRC. The Kiwi drivers will be looking forward to that.